It has been three months and a half since 2023 has begun and during that time I've managed to acquire 51 new books. I don't know how this has happened and I kind of want to get to the bottom of this but I also want to see how many of the new books that I've gotten this year I've actually read and how many have been unread, the different genres that I've been collecting, and overall just give you guys some stats on the new books that I've gotten in 2023. I am so excited to show you guys all of the new books that have entered my collection this year, but I think I'm a tad bit more excited to show you the stats, so why don't we just go ahead and start with those. As we can see with this beautiful first graph, 63% of the new books that I've gotten this year have already been read, while 29% are still yet unread. And then we have an 8% that's called collection, and these are for the books that I have already read, not necessarily this year, but I've read in previous years, but I did not own a copy. And yeah, so <laughs> don't you just love this graph? Isn't it the best thing you've seen? I'm in love, I just, I have to say it. Next up, we have the bought versus gifted graph. 52% of these books have been bought by myself, meaning that a 48% of these books have been gifted by subscribers like you. When I drew up this graph, it honestly felt like a lie. Like I can't believe so many people have thought of me and enjoy my content so much that they've wanted to send me something. And it's just, it was a really beautiful reminder of all of the support and love that I've been receiving this year. So yeah, this graph was just insane to me. <laughs> and finally, we have a categorization or classification of all of the genres that I I've been collecting this year. I don't think it'll come as a surprise to anyone that the number one spot with a 35% is reserved for manga because I've just been loving manga so much this year and I've really upped my manga collecting game. So 35% of the books bought in 2023 so far. It makes sense. And apparently I've also been collecting a lot of new classics because classics has a 27%. And then we have fantasy with a 20%, graphic novels with a 2%. There's literally only one graphic novel, so it makes sense that the percentage is so low. Contemporary with a 12% and memoir with 4%. So as you can see, I'm really just focusing on the manga classics and fantasies so far and you know, I have zero regrets. All of the books that I've been reading have been fantastic, mostly. <laughs> Those are just some cute little quick silly goofy graphics that I wanted to show you guys before we dove right into all of my new books. And I think I'm going to start with the collectibles category or like the collectives. What What is the word that I'm looking for? The books that I bought just so that I could add them to my collection. I've already read them, but I loved them so much that I wanted to have a copy. So why don't we just go ahead and start with those? The very first one is Fangs by Sarah Anderson. I read this last year in October absolutely fell in love with it. This is a graphic novel and it is really short. I did read like the webtoon version of it, but it was just so lovely. I had to have a version for myself, like I had to have a copy for myself. It's basically this love story between a vampire and a werewolf and it's just really funny. It has some really quirky and some really insightful panels and I just there's just so much to love about this. There's so many panels that I could show you to make you understand why I love this graphic novel so much and why I had to own my own copy. So yes, there we go, Fangs by Sarah Anderson. Then we have The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I read this, I think, in like 2021 and I had gifted my own copy to one of my friends, so I didn't own a copy myself. This is actually a gift from Allie. She was so kind to send me a copy and I've been meaning to reread this because I really want to annotate it. When I first read it, I loved it. I cried, I laughed, I, it felt like coming home. And the fact that I finally have a copy of my own again, it just means the world to me. So Allie, if you're watching this, thank you so much. This next one is a recent acquisition. It has traveled all the way from Canada and this was another gift. This is like a collector's edition of the French version of The Invisible Life of Annie LaRue and it's the craziest, oh my god, just look at this. 
It's the craziest coincidence because I have been looking at this edition on my Instagram for the longest time and I've been meaning to get my own copy but like <laughs> the prices were astronomical because of course the Dominican Republic, Canada or just like France, it was it was crazy, my dude, and I was like, okay, I can just admire you from afar. And then that same day that I was looking at videos of this edition, a viewer that lives in Canada and works at a bookstore was like, hey, um, I don't know if you know about this edition, but we just got some copies, and if you'd like, I could send one along to you. And when I tell you, I think I saw God. <laughs> Like, I literally saw God when I received that message, and ever since then, I've been a believer. This is honestly one of the most beautiful editions that I own of one of my all-time favorite books, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, and it's all because of you guys. Like, I can't believe it. Look. Okay, can we just take a second to appreciate it? Come on, let's go. This is the top, the front. Thank you. This is um, the back. These, look at that. Look at this. Oh my God. I'm gonna cry. There's also a reverse. You can reverse it, yes. Look at this, oh my goodness. But that's not all. It also, this is how it looks naked. Oh, she is stunning. Um, and then it has end papers. I think the end papers here are different. Yes, they are. This is New York City. <sighs> I mean, come on. Like there's just so much to love about this. And let us not forget the beautiful golden bookmark you see it it's there yeah can you guys see it basically this is the newest love of my life and this will definitely be the most beautiful book that i will collect in 2023 the year of our lord so yeah i'm just i i still can't get over how stupidly lucky i had to be for the stars to align and for me to get this it's just groundbreaking honestly the last book that i bought just for collection's sake is the bell jar written by sylvia plath i love sylvia plath i love her works i love her mind i love her writing i yeah sylvia plath just means a lot to me and i've read her unabridged journals and then last year i read the bell jar absolutely fell in love with it and then i saw this edition on my trip to taiwan it's this illustrated edition with some really stunning visuals and i knew i just i had to have it so i got it <laughs> should we do unread or read okay let's do red because most of you guys if you've seen my wrap-ups you you'll be familiar with these books the first 11 volumes have been of chainsaw man who could forget i read this for a 24-hour readathon i have never been the same yeah my life has forever been changed because of chainsaw man then i read volume 18 of jujutsu kaisen i read the first three volumes of one piece which apparently a lot of people are excited about of course i knew that this is a very popular and very well-loved series and manga but i didn't know how many people were excited for me to start it so it was very nice to see so many people happy that I was reading this and I actually really did enjoy it. I am planning on continuing the manga and maybe even possibly starting the anime, but I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I'm still unsure. Then I read volumes something and something <laughs> of Attack on Titan. I'm pretty sure this is like seven and eight. Seven or eight and nine, somewhere along the lines. Volumes 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 of Attack on Titan. I don't want to talk about this one because this one was such a disappointment. Yeah, this was a three star, but this was a five one. So like, it's okay. We're going to be okay. I believe we're going to be okay. This year, I've only read two Junji Ito's, but he is coming out with two new novels. So hopefully I can get to those soon. But so far I've read Black Paradox and Junji Ito's Cat Diary. This one was a 2.5 star. I don't even want to talk about it, but this one, was a very solid 3.5 <laughs> so you know it hasn't been the best um regarding junji ito so far but hopefully with the new ones that he's coming out with this year my love for him will reignite because so far it's kind of like you know it's kind of dying down 
but it's okay. Apparently every author needs to have his or her flop era. It's okay, we accept mistakes. And then finally, the last manga volume that I've read this year is Attack on Titan No Regrets Full Color Edition, complete color edition. This is a prequel of Levi's backstory and of course this was a 5 out of 5 star. I read this for my 48 hour readathon which I'm still not recovered from and it was a good time. I loved it. Yes, it was fantastic. These are all of the new books that I have read that are not manga. You can't even see my full face, but let's just assume that my lips are here. You, got, you guys know the drill. You know how faces work. I do have some duplicates in this pile because two people wanted to send me the same book, which again, thank you so much for thinking of me and wanting to send me a book. And then another one is because I asked for a refund and they gave me the refund, but then they also sent another copy along. <laughs> And I think, I think somebody mentioned it in my comments that they have a theory that all of the books that I have duplicates of, I end up not enjoying. And I think that jinxed it for me because literally every duplicate that I have here is lower than a four star or like lower than a 3.5 star. The first one that we have here is the Brothers Karamasov. As you can see, I have duplicates. And as you can see, one is very clearly red all the other one isn't. I will reserve my opinions of what I thought of the Brothers Karamasov for my April wrap up, but um, just know that I read it. There we go, clear difference. Yes, moving on. Then I read a new favorite classic and that is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. He also wrote the Brothers Karamasov, but Crime and Punishment in my mind stays supreme. Look at all of the tabs, like, wow. It's just beautiful. Then I read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. I also read this for reading 200 pages every day. This was a great book. I can't believe that it took me so long to read this iconic children's classic, but I'm so happy that I finally did because I really enjoyed it. Then I read The Sonnets and a Lover's Complaint by Shakespeare. This is my very first William Shakespeare, and I'm just going to say I was surprised. Severance by Ling Ma. Then I have two copies of The Idiot by Alif Batuman, Batuman. Yes, by, by The Idiot. This was a two star. That's all I'm gonna say. You can barely see the difference from a read and unread copy. But hey, sometimes you need to have some flops in order to appreciate the good ones. <laughs> I also have two copies of The Grand Master of Demonic Cultivation. Which one is the red one? I guess you'll never know. <laughs> Actually, which one is it? Wait, I want to die, but I want to eat the Woki by Baek Sehi, translated by Anton Herr. I've also read The Stolen Air by Holly Black, Anxious People by Frederick Bachman, a new favorite book that I read with my Patreons. And finally, I read A Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. I also read this for my 48 hour readathon. And again, I will reserve my thoughts for my April wrap up. That is all I'm going to say. <laughs> and then finally, these are the books that I have not read yet. The first book on this pile is A Four Wilder Magic written by Alison Saft. And I'm actually currently reading this one. I am 90 pages in. So I'm definitely going to be finishing this in April, but it's still technically unread. So I've counted it as unread. I love how Hannah from A Clockwork Reader describes it because she says that this is basically Roy and Riza fanfic from Full Metal Alchemist. And as I started to read this, I could totally see why she would say that. And I am enjoying this story. I hope that I keep enjoying it as I read more. Next up is Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. This is an April buddy read. So technically I do have to also read this one this month, but I'm only seven pages in. <laughs> I think after I finished the Brothers Karamasov, I was just, you know, I lost all hope for classic literature. So I kind of need, you know, a little bit of time to recover, but hopefully I will be reading this this month because since I have finished the last hours, I really want to see where Cassandra Clare got her inspiration from, which is the Great Expectations book by Charles Dickens. And yeah, I mean, I don't really know what I can say about this one because I'm not really sure what it's about. So far, we've been introduced to our main character, Pip, and apparently he's an orphan. He lost like 
his two parents and his five brothers <laughs> like it's been a really intense beginning because seven pages in and there's already been so much death so i'm interested to see where the story is going and like what the overall theme is going to be for this book then we have sweet bean paste by durian sukegawa i'm really excited to get to this one i have no idea what it's about but it just feels like you know a slice of life type of story like nothing really is going on but it's more about the emotions and how humans react to certain things that's kind of what this book is giving me a charming tale of friendship love and loneliness in contemporary japan then we have another charles dickens and that is oliver twist this was a gift from morgan and look at how floppy that like i can't get over it i'm trying to hold it upright and it just flops like sir please calm down this is not the flop olympics but anyways yes oliver twist i think this is also about an orphan i don't oh yes the story of the orphan oliver who runs away from the workhouse to be taken in by a den of thieves oh <laughs> okay that sounds really fun and entertaining but I don't really have plans to pick this one up anytime soon. I want to read it before 2023 is over. Maybe I'll read all of these before 2023 is over. I don't know if that's being overly ambitious. Like, I mean, there are quite a lot of classics in this pile and I don't really want to stress myself out too much, but that would be a nice goal to have. Like just finish every single one of my physical books. If you believe in me, I feel like I can do it. So let me know down below if you believe in me and I might just try my very best to prove you right. Um, next up, we have The Tale of Princess Fatima, Warrior Woman, the Arabic epic of that Alhima. Look at this gorgeous cover. Oh my goodness. The only Arabic epic named for a woman, recounting the thrilling adventures of a legendary medieval warrior. It looks gorgeous and this was also a gift, so thank you so much Ilaria for sending this my way, you absolute legend. Then we have The Grapes of Wrath, written by John Steinbeck. Again, not much is known about this book by me. I just know it apparently won a Pulitzer Prize. So that's, that's amazing, that's great, I'm so happy for you. Then we have Ovid's Metamorphoses. I am very, very intimidated by this classic, but I really want to try my hand at it. it. It's intimidating because it's written as... I don't even know if this is like a poem. It's like a really long poem. <laughs> It literally just, it's a very long poem. Yeah, one continuous poem ranging in time from the beginning of the universe to Ovid's own lifetime. I mean, that's kind of intimidating if you ask me. Um, and it's formatted like this. So it's just continue. Like when they say continuous, they actually mean continuous. And that's just a little bit intimidating to me. But I really, really love this cover. And this was also a gift. Let me tell you from who? From Morgan. Oh my God. Hi, Morgan. So Morgan is out here just testing the limits of my knowledge and, you know, the boundaries of my intelligence. But once again, we thank you. <laughs> then we have another Charles Dickens. And this one is A Christmas Carol and Other Christmas Writings. This is a gift from a French subscriber called Rachel. Rachel, thank you so much. Um, of course, I'm going to be reserving this one for Christmas time. It really doesn't make sense to me to read a Christmas book in the middle of summer and like the middle of August or just even fall. It just doesn't compute in my brain. So I'm really excited for December, not only because it means the end of 2023, but it also means Christmas. And then I get to read A Christmas Carol. So like so many exciting things are waiting for me at the end of this year. The Romance of Three Kingdoms. Look at this epic cover. Oh my goodness. A vast human epic of warlords, schemers, heroes, and villains battling for the throne. The Romance of the Three Kingdoms has enthralled readers for more than 500 years. Ooh, we have little illustrations. <laughs> I'm like a baby. I love when books have illustrations on them. They are very underrated. And this was also a gift from Ilaria. Why is the little note fading? Like you can barely read that. That is very rude. <laughs> North and South written by Elizabeth Gaskell. And this was a gift from Sid. So Sid, if you're watching, thank you so much. I cannot wait for our buddy read. The only thing I know is that apparently Elizabeth Gaskell was really close with Charlotte Bronte or like with the Bronte sisters. 
and apparently if I like Pride and Prejudice, I'm going to love North and South. So I am excited. I am very, very excited for this one. Next up, we have Just Kids written by Patti Smith. And I will be honest, full transparency, I have tried to read this one before, but I actually DNF'd it like 50 pages in because I was not connecting with the book. I was not vibing. I was like, why should I care? <laughs> like, who are you? So before I pick this book back up again, I kind of want to acquaint myself with who these people are and what they've done with their lives like why is this woman writing a memoir and why is this relationship that she had with this man so important like I want to go into this book not totally blind because I feel like I won't appreciate what this book is if I don't know you know like the base facts so I will definitely be coming back to this book but for now I've put it down then we have The Vampire Lestat a novel by Anne Rice this is the sequel to Interview with the Vampire which I read last year if there's one thing that my life is lacking it's definitely more vampire books so I am very very excited to read The Vampire Lestat of course I'm interested because I really really enjoyed Interview with the Vampire I did fall asleep while I was reading it but that doesn't mean anything it doesn't take away from my enjoyment of the book Oh my god, okay, just like look at this, okay? This is really interesting. <laughs> it just looks really good. I don't know if I should leave this for October because of, of course, you know, when October comes, I'm going to be on the lookout for more gothic tales, mythical creatures, werewolves, vampires, twilight, you know. The Scum Villain's Self-Saving System. This is a very pretty book. It is gorgeous. I love the color palette. Um, I love what they've done with the place. I have no idea what the story is about, but this was a gift from Ilaria and she says it's one of her favorite books. So like, I have to give it a try, you know? Like, I can't just disregard it because the other book that this author wrote was not for me. I really just want to give it a try. Like, maybe I will enjoy this one. Oh yeah, and along with this one, she also sent me Heaven Official's Blessing. I think it's by the same author. So she sent me these two books. Okay, but look, look at this color palette. I can't get over how beautiful this book is, but both of these are gorgeous and I cannot wait to try them out and see if I like them. I will keep my expectations low, but I'm still hoping that I have fun. Then we have Carrie Soto is back, written by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was a gift from Ryan. Thank you, Ryan, if you're watching. I have been wanting to read Carrie Soto ever since it came out and i think this came out in like 2022 so tell me why i haven't read it yet oh my goodness i think it's because i read malibu rising in 2022 and i really didn't like it so i was like oh no has taylor jenkins reed lost her chokehold on me like why didn't i like malibu rising i've liked all of her other books i've liked two of her books <laughs> So like now I'm kind of scared that I won't like Carrie Soto, but I'm still nevertheless very, very excited. There is a Cooper hair in my Carrie Soto book. <laughs> Rude. Anyways, yes, Carrie Soto is back. Oh, look at that. The last book out of the 51 new books that I have added to my collection this year, whether it be because I bought them or they were sent to me by publishers or you people gave it to me. Why did I say you people? I'm so sorry. And when I say you people, I mean my gorgeous, gorgeous girls, my beautiful, wonderful viewers, my favorite people, you people. Um, yes, the very last book out of the 51 new books that I've added to my collection this year is Jade War, written by Fonda Lee. And again, this was a gift from Anouk. Anouk, if you're watching this, thank you so much. This is a mafia fantasy that focuses on Jade magic and family and sort of it gives off godfather-esque vibes so if you're into that i feel like you would really enjoy this one i've been wanting to read jade war ever since i finished jade city so tell me why i haven't picked it up yet i don't i feel like i'm just intimidated by the size of this this has like 587 pages i know that i wrote longer books than this but like try telling that to my brain she just doesn't understand she's stupid okay she is going through it and no matter how many times you tell her hey you've read war and peace that's like literally double of this book you can totally do this no matter how many times you tell her that she just won't believe you so we just gotta give her some time okay she's going to do it i am going to do it. why am i referring to myself in a third person <laughs> I'm going to do this this year. Trust in me because this is on my list of 23 books to read before 2023 ends. 
so I definitely need to read this book this year. I will do it. I just need some time, okay? I just need you guys to believe in me. Those are the 51 new books that I've added in the span of three months and a half of 2023. I can't wait to see what the rest of 2023 has in store for me. Like if in three months and a half, I've already acquired 51 books, imagine how many more new books I'm going to have acquired by the end of 2023. That's just insane to me. I can't really wrap my head around that. I'm really happy with my book collection at this point and even the books that I didn't necessarily love or really enjoy, I still feel like I took something away from them. So it wasn't a complete loss. I'm okay. I'm doing great. <laughs> Thanks for asking. So those are all of the books that I have acquired in 2023 so far. I cannot wait to see what the rest of 2023 has in store for us. If you like this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. It really helps this channel out and it helps me stay alive so that I can keep doing what I love doing which is making these videos for you guys. I'm just saying you could live here with me rent free just with the click of a button that's all I'm saying. <laughs> no pressure though. I also have a Patreon where I post exclusive content, host reading sprints and monthly readathons so if that is something that would be interesting to you the link is down below as always. I would love to have you join my army of premium simpers. Once again, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye. Hey Jimmy, you nice. Keep going.